Welcome. In this video, we are going to be solving Griffith's problem 6.1 as it appears in the third edition of the book. Now, what this problem states is that suppose that we put a delta function bump in the center of the infinite square well, and the Hamiltonian for this situation looks like h prime, right, the perturbative Hamiltonian, is going to be alpha, some constant, times the delta function, which will be x minus a over 2. And of course, this is because we are in the center of the infinite square well. And what we are asked to do is to find the first order correction to the allowed energies. All right. So this is our first problem in perturbative theory in quantum mechanics. And what is going on here is that we have a system that we know, which is the infinite square well. We know its wave functions, we know its energy levels. And now we add a slight change to the Hamiltonian. Right? We have now this small perturbation, which is in the form of a delta function. So how do we deal with this? Well, in the previous video, we found that we can find the first order corrections to the energy levels with the formula of bra of the unperturbed wave functions times our perturbation, and then the ket of the unperturbed wave functions. If you don't know where this came from or why this has this form, then I really urge you to check out the previous video in the playlist where we derive this formula. All right, so what exactly is each one of these things? Well, the h prime is exactly what is up here. And these wave functions are the wave functions that we found in the previous course when we were solving the infinite square well. So they are square root of 2 over a times sine of n pi over a times x. Okay, and now we simply have to plug this into the equation. Now, since this is bra, this is ket, remember to take the complex conjugate of the wave function, but since it's real, there's actually not going to be any difference. So the energy levels are going to be the integral from 0 to a of square root of 2 over a sine of n pi over a x, right? This is the first part, this is that. And then we put in here the Hamiltonian, which is going to be alpha delta x minus a over 2. And then we have to include the ket, which will be, once again, square root of 2 over a sine of n pi over a x. And of course, don't forget about the dx. Okay. Now we can simplify this a little bit. So this is going to be integral from 0 to a. Then we have this 2 over a, which we could in principle just write outside of the integral since it's just a constant. And then we have sine squared, sine squared of n pi a over x. And we have an alpha, which we could also write outside, but I'm kind of running low on space, so I'll just put it in front. And this is delta x minus a over 2 dx. Okay, so we have to perform this integral, but luckily for us, there is a delta function in here. So that means that, um, remember, the delta function has a value of 0 everywhere except at the point x equals a over 2, which means that since the integral sums the value uh, right, of, of the function over all of its, uh, of the area of interest, which is in this case from 0 to a, the only place where it's going to be non-zero is going to be at a over 2. So this integral is simply going to be 2 alpha over a, the constant that we're in front, times sine squared of n pi over a, and x will be at a over 2, so times a over 2. And well, the a's will simply cancel each other out. And now what do we have here? Let me maybe copy this and bring it to the next slide so I can explain it a bit further. Now this is the first order correction to the energy levels. Okay, so what exactly happens here? Now we have sine of, maybe let's get rid of the a's, sine of n pi over 2. So this result will depend on the value of n. So let's see what happens if we have even or odd values of n. 
So let's begin with n odd because, well, one, <laughs> one comes before two, so I don't know. Uh, n odd. So for example, when it is equal to one. So in that case, what we have is that the first order correction to the energy levels will be two alpha over a and sine squared of n is now one, so just pi over two, which is one. So just two alpha over a. What happens if it is three, for example, then we would have sine squared of three pi over two. Now three pi over two is minus one, the sine of that. But since it is sine squared, we are back to one, so we get exactly the same result. So actually for any odd value of n, we get this same result. Now let's see what happens if n is even. For example, n equals two. In that case, our energy levels will be two alpha over a and sine of two pi over two, which is simply pi. But sine of pi is of course zero. If it were four, for example, we would get sine of two pi, which is also zero. So this will always be multiplied by zero, so it's just going to be zero. So putting this together means that the energy levels, En1, will be zero if N is even, and two alpha over A if, the, if N is odd. And it's actually quite inter interesting to see that if the, if the value of n is even, actually our system doesn't even notice the bump. And the reason behind that is because the problem looks as follows. We have our infinite square well here, right? Which with our potential in this axis, the x axis, here, this is zero, this is a over two, and this is a, and our potential is going to look somewhat like that. So if we have an odd function, an odd wave function, right, for example, n equals one, which is something like that, then we can see that it clearly passes through this bump. But if it is even, the even wave functions look something like that. And exactly at the point where this perturbation is, our wave function is zero anyways, so it doesn't notice it, which is quite interesting. All right, so that is the way to solve this problem. I hope this was helpful. If it was the case, make sure to leave a like and a comment in the video if there's any particular thing you would like, want to uh, me to check out or something, um, leave a comment there, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much.